I feel like the big difference between what we're doing and, and what a lot of people are doing is I, I genuinely want to scare people that don't like it. Like, I feel like if, if it doesn't make you feel, if you just watch it and go like, all right, yeah, fuck this guy. Then that, that, then that would actually like hurt my feelings. But if you fucking hate it, if you're like, fuck this dude. What, ugh, what, the, what is this boring? Or like, what is this shit? Like that kind of thing? Oh, good, give me that. You know, I'll take hard, hard left or hard right. Either you fucking love it and you can't keep your eyes off of it, or you fucking hate it and every moment that you see longer gives you more reason to hate it, good. You know? And did we start? <laughs> this like tight band that is cult-ish. You can't really put your finger on it, but it's just the energy amongst the people on stage behind me is not what you normally see in a band. Particularly not, I've noticed like now, even bands with a front man and stuff, the people in the back, and this is, you know, cool, it's great. They're having a great time and like looking at each other and like rocking out and it's just like that's cool that's that's great for your energy when dead people plays like what i want us to be is very much like we are it's going forward it's foreground and it's attacking you to a degree or embracing you depending on how you interpret it my name is ruben sindo acosta and uh i am the band leader for a bunch of dead people i was in a band called afuche for many years uh, and unfortunately, our saxophone player passed away. And it was right when we had released the record and done all this stuff, and it was really like, yeah, we're finally, uh. And then uh, he passed away, and he was such an integral part of the band. And it, we had had horn players before. We had had a ton of lineup changes. But we had finally like worked seven years to get to, like, this is exactly what we were trying to do. Uh, when he passed away, it was like a death in the family spent like a year not really playing or writing music. Um, and then my iPod shit the bed. And as I was driving to and from work, I didn't have a radio. I had like computer speakers that I would plug my iPod into in the van. Uh, so I started singing to myself in the van and I would go to work. I worked in this kitchen in the basement and I hated the cla the rock station because it plays the same like seven songs over and over. So I found, uh, I say this all the time, it's CBS FM, fucking super corporate radio. But it's the way that their programming works is it's anything that was a hit between like 1955 and 1994. And you'll get New Edition and then like Chubby Checker and then The Clash and then Michael Jackson, and then Talking Heads, and then like Otis Redding, just on shuffle. And I sort of started to remember how much I loved pop music as time went on, and I started really writing and recording a lot of this stuff. I was like, shit, I should play this live, and I miss playing live, and I miss, I miss being in a band. Um, so the name A Bunch of Dead People had been lying around for a long time. In reality, A Bunch of Dead People has been four different bands. It was originally the name given to Jason from Public Speaking. Everyone that was in his old band, the Grand March, but him, and then most of Afuche, we were in a band called A Bunch of Dead People, um, which was just supposed to be like this improv, like James Chance and the Contortions, like weird funk shit. And I was playing saxophone. I like that. I like the idea of like something that you can't, like an earworm that comes from something ugly is interesting to me, you know? Uh, Can does it all the time, because um, they're the best. But yeah, Modern Day Dead People is uh, the cult of Ruben Sindo Acosta. It is mind above all, heart above all else is the ethos. And uh, it's, uh, it's meant to be a, like a purging experience when we play live. It was hard to translate on record. And I, it took me, that's why it took me four fucking years to record the record. But I want it to be, like, I want it to be this like hypnotizing, emotional thing coming from uh, like an anti-hero, like a super villain. <laughs> Yeah.
you can agree with parts of it, but the parts that you agree with should be coming from bad parts of you, you know? And I'm not encouraging it, I'm just expressing it. Like, here are all the terrible, shitty fucking thoughts I've had. Some of, the, some of it's enlightening, and sometimes nihilism and, and negativity can be helpful, you know? Um, but for the most part, the character is, is typically wrong, the dead people character. Um, and it's not all an act. I mean, it's shit that I feel and shit that I've thought. It's not like I'm, with very few exceptions in tunes, like, it's, it's real. It's, it's shit that I've felt. Um, I just love kind of galvanizing it and like, wouldn't it be great? Because it's, it's potent. There's something in it that's very venomous. We've talked about it for five years now of like, we should just have a label of our friends. That was the initial idea, just our friends. Um, because we felt like there was a, a unifying voice even though it wasn't very similar music. Um, and I think, you know, we've gotten old enough and uh, wise enough as far as like, well, we can do it and, and do it the most intelligent and concise way possible for us, like as far as what we want to achieve. Um, so we just kind of like, I sent an email to like five friends and we kind of went like, hey, we want to do this, who's down? And the two people that have the most time and give the most of a shit is myself and Jason. Are myself and Jason? Are myself and Jason. Um, and aesthetically, we've we've been on the same page for a long time, and we kind of went like, cool. What if we had? Okay, so what's Floridor? You know, what what does it mean? What do we want to put out? What are we interested in doing? And I'm a big vinyl guy, and wanted. I was like, man, we should do like limited vinyl pressings. A, it's you know less expensive, and we're not going to end up with uh, a million boxes of records somewhere. Um, B, it makes it really personal. Like records already in, in and of themselves are an artifact. It's the physical record. Because if you leave it up to like who's gonna sign you and maybe some label that like, yeah, sure, they'll put out you know your record online and maybe a couple like, you know, maybe they'll do vinyl, maybe they'll do that. And they won't give a shit about you because you're nothing to them to a degree. Whereas with us, it's like family and like Jason's record is to me just, I mean, it's fucking incredible, but it's as important to what's happening with Floridor as your eternal reward is. It's like, I, I love what we did, man. I, you know, we worked our fucking ass off on it and uh, I don't hate it, which is rare after I finish a record. And Jason's at about the same place. And since we're both like, hey, we're really proud of this stuff. And instead of going around and begging, let's put it under our umbrella. And on top of it, let's go, let's go one further. You know, let's have it be where when you read Floridor on a flyer, you know you're getting a good lineup of music. So, this is the front cover of the album. Photography by uh, Steve Mangum. Uh, this has been in my head for the last four years. And when you get a photographer who has OCD, you get exactly what you want as far as like finite detail. So, here it is. This is... Uh, Allison's arm? I should know her last name. I should. But it's Corey's roommate, and only one of her arms is like this. She only has freckles on one arm. I'm all about it. Uh, instead of a traditional spine, we have just the armpit, which I'm really excited about. It's just a continuation of the arm on the front. Uh, so there's still something. It's not like it's blank, but yeah. And then we have the back cover. So there's that. Now, black inner sleeve, very important to me. I loved the uh, black and poly lined too. That's great for the record. And it just looks so good when you pull out a black inner sleeve. Um, much, you know, defining the aesthetic of what we want to do with Floridor, all the albums are going to have center labels like that with the Floridor logo on them. Um, Typically hand stamped and handwritten, but this one is a little, little different because I felt like spending way more money. So there's that, and then ah, this. Ah, that's the Dead People Clear Gold Record. Um, yeah, they had a couple different color options. Uh, initially, I wanted to do a like gray spattered, like a kind of marble gray, 
which I might do for the next pressing if we sell <laughs> the copies that we have. Um, and then I also wanted to do a purple vinyl, but I felt like that was too much purple. And uh, yeah, the gold and purple is a little bit royal and pompous, and I kind of like that. The, uh, the dark gray in the middle makes me very, very happy. That was like a week's worth of decision making on just my own, because I'm a, uh, I'm a, what am I? Uh, it takes me long to decide on specific things, so there's that. And uh, when you put on needle on this, maybe you enjoy it, or maybe you hate it. Either way, I'm fine. It's already made, you know? And I've got the space for them, so. And also, anybody who owns records, uh, please put, like, you see how the, this is open here? Don't put it in like this, because then there's potential for it to slip out. Don't do that, just put it in like this. It fits, it's a square. See? And that way, if you do that, maybe it'll fall, but it'll fall in the sleeve, so the record itself doesn't fall. And also get a plastic sleeve for it, anyway. Um, I'm just showing it off because I'm really happy about the matte finish. But yeah, that's uh, the unboxing of a bunch of dead people's floor door release, Your Eternal Reward. Monks, introduce yourself. Monkey. Okay, wrong signal. Come here. Sit. Come up here. Sit down. Okay, you're bad with the camera. Say hi. Say hi to the world. You're terrible at this. You're not going to be my PR dog. You know that? I love you very much, but you're not a PR dog. This is blue. He doesn't like interviews. He doesn't speak English, that's the problem. He has a couple words, but most of his language is um, restricted to like, yes, no, okay, down, up, paw. Um, he does one trick. It's a pretty good trick, actually. Um, he's really intrigued by what's going on over there, though. 